It's not often that I call a surveillance footage and badge cam a goat rope, but today we have a goat rope. Hi everybody, welcome to today's bonus badge cam surveillance lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host as always, John Correa. Today's goat rope comes to us from Decatur, Alabama. Now more than ever, you need trusted coverage to help you win the fight after the fight. The company I trust and recommend is Firearms Legal Protection. They offer discounts on all their plans at the link in the description. I recommend the premium plan. Officers are responding here to an owner of a liquor store who has called in that he's got a guy at gunpoint who has been an armed robber. He was actually standing there uh, because he's being held at gunpoint by the owner. And so you see multiple officers responding here and they tell the guy to get on the ground. And so they do. And now they're trying to figure out how they're going to make entry here to get everybody secured. So they've got that guy on the ground. First officer kind of comes over. Our officer here is going to come in as well. Let's listen into the audio. We had this one on surveillance footage as well. So this is the owner who waves the officers in. He's like, oh, okay guys, come on in here. And you can see he was, I think, behind the counter and now he comes back around it. He does have a firearm out. He unloads that firearm on the counter while they're trying to figure out how to come in here. And he's kind of talking to him and like trying to reload his magazine here. And, and I'm letting this whole thing play because I want you to see how this one comes out. It's about to get not great here in a minute because he's talking to them, whatever, and telling them what they should be doing while he's reloading the magazine of his firearm that he has unchambered the gun. And I think they're trying to tell him to get on the ground and he's like, no, and when they say, put your hands up, he says, no, you put your hands up. And that causes this officer to absolutely drill him in the face. And then they are, the three officers here are then going to you know, put him down on the ground. Now, if you go read the news stories that I've linked in the description, that actually broke the jaw of this shop owner. And again, he's the owner of the shop who actually called police for them to come and help him because he had an armed robber at gunpoint. Or I'm not positive if it was an armed robber or if it was a shoplifter at some point. There's some you know, differences in the news stories there. Um, and they, I haven't seen anything on the officer in terms of the internal affairs investigation uh, or in terms of a settlement from the city on this, but we are going to look at lessons on this one from both the private citizen and from the law enforcement perspective. Man, what a disaster all the way around. I just want to invite all of my viewers to come and join us on our second YouTube channel, Active Self Protection Extra. Here we teach mindset and the things you need to be thinking about in a defensive encounter. There we teach skill set. Handguns, rifles, shotguns, empty-handed skills, legal and moral self-defense, all that stuff. So join us there, there's a link in the description. So for my officers here, you recognize that you are coming into a situation where you know what you have is, is apparently an armed suspect or, or a formerly armed suspect being held at gunpoint by a private citizen. And so you know you're gonna show up to this amped up and you're gonna have to make some significant decisions. So my first thing for my officer viewers, make sure that you're practicing your combat breathing on the way in and establishing who's communicating, who's doing what, what everybody's job is if you can, so you can go in with your arousal level as low as possible so that you do things the right way. Now, again, notice they have the guy here who's got his hands up. He's probably the guy that's being held at gunpoint. And so they gotta decide, what are they gonna do with that guy? He gets down on the ground, okay, fine, but now you still gotta go and secure the rest of the facility. So this is where communication comes in really well. You gotta communicate with your fellow officers, with anybody else in there, and do so and get everybody kind of organized without getting anybody hurt. I really like that this officer here doesn't just you know think, oh, okay, we got a guy on the ground, we're fine. He goes and starts looking for work and looking for, is everybody secure here? Is there anybody that we don't know of? Are there any surprises? And so not just being complacent here, I think is really good and shows a high level of commitment. Even when you're looking at something that is you know pretty routine, I would recommend treat it like a training opportunity, do it according to plan and make sure again, that you look for your dead spaces and make sure you don't get surprised by anything. I think you did a fine job of that here. Now then, let's also recognize that we gotta read the room a little bit, guys. You gotta recognize that the other officer who's, who's already got eyes on this location here is pretty chill. So he does have a gun in his hand, which we would expect, but he's talking to somebody and not pointing a gun at him. And when that's the case, let him deal with his problem. Don't take over his problem for him. I think this officer came in really, you know, kind of heavy and deciding he was gonna own everything. When that guy's already got that spot, let him do what he does. When he comes in here and decides to, to escalate it by pointing a gun at the guy, 
That's when the guy got really pissed and, and recognized that your actions do matter, that you can escalate a conflict as well. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to get into these kinds of fights. Now, I think the officer here is probably going to make the, the, you know, um, the, the statement that, oh, I thought the guy was going back for his gun. Because as you can see his gun sitting there on the counter and, oh, I think he's going for that gun and we knew he had a gun. At that point, though, again, you re got to recognize, okay, what's the appropriate level of force? And I don't know that this was it at all. So what we see here from the private citizen perspective is, is to really think through some of these things and recognize that when the police show up, you don't want to have a gun in your hand and you want to follow all lawful commands. So you notice that the guy's got his gun out here when the police show up. I'm going to tell you, as soon as the cops show up, you want that gun on the counter or back in your holster if you've got a holster on your person and you don't want anywhere near the gun. You want to have your hands up where they can see them. You want to obey the lawful commands here. And I get it that this guy's like, no, this is my shop. I have the right to be here. You know, I did the right thing. I'm the good person here. All that's true. But you have the opportunity to de-escalate the conflict as well and recognize that they're going to come in fairly amped up and probably put everybody in cuffs. And so you got to chill out and and our you know this is a two-way street here we got to be good as well and so handling a firearm handling a magazine around police officers while they're securing a scene from an armed robbery is incredibly ill-advised and I would not recommend it at all now that said again as an officer you got to recognize when somebody's an actual threat and when somebody's not and use the proportional amount of force that is appropriate for the moment now recognize here that what I see is you see him jut his chin forward when the officer points his gun at him with a pistol mounted light on it and so a couple things, recognize that when you use force and even something as simple as using your flashlight can escalate a conflict because it, it tells him, hey, wait a minute, I'm trying to control him. And, and for some people that can be highly agitating. So do the things that de-escalate a conflict if you can. Now, sometimes you gotta go, nope, I gotta defend myself. But otherwise pointing a gun at somebody you don't intend to shoot immediately is a terrible idea. Now, notice as well here that he's telling him, no, you put your hands up and he's trying to get up in these officers' face. I think this citizen was totally wrong to do that. I get that he's agitated that they don't trust him, but they don't know him and they don't know anything about him and they don't know who is what. And I don't think this is, has anything to do with any ethnic differences or race or any of that stuff. I think we see an agitated guy who I understand why he's agitated, but at the same time, he's got to have the emotional control to recognize the officers have to secure the scene. He didn't do that, but the officer still doesn't have a right to do what he did. Now notice here that this officer who's on screen has said, okay, I'm going to put my gun away now. It's not time to uh, start to use it. That's very important because he does something good here. He goes, okay, I'm going for this guy's hands. Now we got to recognize that the officers are going to use force and, and from the lowest level, they're probably going to put everybody in cuffs until that they get everything situated. You got to expect that. If you're involved in an armed robbery, you're involved in these kinds of situations, highly likely that they're going to put everybody in cuffs. And I think this officer on camera is doing exactly what we would expect. He's using that force. Okay, I'm going to secure this guy's hand. This is going to be a low level of force so we can get everything figured out. This other officer just comes in and drills the guy. And quite frankly, I don't understand this. I don't think that is a reasonable or proportional amount of force. And, and so, you know, it seemed to me he came in hard, he came in geeked up, pointing a gun when he didn't need to necessarily point a gun. When that guy got a little bit more agitated, he just decided, okay, I'm putting the gun away and I'm going to absolutely drill this guy. When in reality, his desire is to control him or his, his legal and moral desire should be to control him, to keep him from being a threat. And I don't think a punch in the face does that in any capacity. The guy was, was verbally agitated, but he was not physically resisting in that moment. And so I don't see any justification for this. And quite frankly, I, you know, if I'm that guy uh, and who suffered a broken jaw in this particular one uh, through what looks to me to be a not great use of force, and, and for all my law enforcement viewers, you know that this is going to be on the national news. And so you've got to take the actions to make things right and do a good thing and not do the thing that gets you put on national news. And what gets you put on national news is using an inappropriate amount of force in the moment. This is not okay, so you've got to use the right amount of force. Now then, uh, you know, again, from the private citizen's perspective, I think he did things wrong as well. And so, I, man, I really think this is a goat rodeo, guys. This is, a, you know, a cascade of mistakes by everybody. So let's make sure that we're doing things the right way as a private citizen. Let's make sure that we're doing things the right way as law enforcement as well so that we don't have negative, uh, you know, interactions like this that hurt our relations across our nation. But instead, we do the right thing and cover our ass.